Have you ever found yourself anxious or worried about something and your first response is to go to someone who might be experiencing something similar so you can talk to them or get their opinions on what it is that you're experiencing? Well, there's a reason for this psychologically, and today we're going to go through a paper and a study published in 1959 by Stanley Schachter that talks about the psychology of affiliation and anxiety and why there's this relationship between these two things when people tend to be in states of high arousal. Let's get into it. Before we get into the study itself, we need to go over the term affiliation so we can know what we're talking about exactly. In psychology, affiliation is described as a social relationship in which a person joins or seeks out one or more other individuals, usually on the basis of liking or a personal attachment, rather than perceived material benefits. So an easier way to think of this is that affiliation is kind of wanting to connect with another person for an emotional reason as opposed to some sort of... Uh, you know, superficial reason. You're having this need or desire to connect with another person on kind of the human level. In a very real sense, the entire enterprise of social psychology rests on the fact that people like to be together. They affiliate. From studying case histories of people who've been in total isolation for long periods of time, such as religious hermits or prisoners in solitary confinement, we knew that total isolation was a debilitating experience. It seemed to produce states of great anxiety and fear. And we made what I think was a plausible guess. We assumed that if isolation breeds anxiety and fear, it's conceivable then that the state of anxiety or fear would lead people to want to affiliate. So you can see from that short clip that there's this kind of interesting relationship between the idea of like isolation, anxiety, affiliation, all these sorts of things. And that's what he wanted to test when he ran this experiment and ran this study. And the kind of general hypothesis was that people who are in these states of isolation don't have any way to kind of release this tension when it comes to wanting to affiliate and getting that basic human need met. And therefore, maybe that's what causes all the extra damage to them psychologically. So I think to me it made sense that he now wanted to go through and attempt to see if this was actually true and see if people who were in states of high arousal or anxiety would be more inclined to want to affiliate with people around them. So we're going to look at the study now and break it down and talk about how we went through this. From an experimental design point of view, this experiment was actually pretty simple. Essentially, he just took two groups of girls roughly the same age and separated them. And then he told one group of girls, we're going to shock you for this experiment. It's going to be quite a decent little shock. You're going to experience, you know, some pain. It's going to hurt you. And then we're going to measure your heart rate and this sort of thing. All, all these things that you would typically want to measure when conducting some sort of biological test. And then with the other group of women, he said, look, we're just going to give you a very small shock. You're barely going to feel anything at all. It's not going to hurt. Don't even worry about it. And it was for the same reasons that we're going to, you know, measure your heart rate, this sort of thing. And in the end, he didn't actually end up shocking anyone. What he did next was tell each group, hey, we need to take about 10 minutes to prepare for this. So feel free to kind of mingle amongst yourselves or talk with each other, do whatever you want to do. Then they left and they observed what the girls did for the 10 minutes, how they interacted with each other. And what actually happened is pretty interesting. The group that was told that they were going to be shocked more, or they were going to feel the shock, was far more likely to communicate with each other than they were the group who was told that they were going to receive only like a small insignificant shock. And this is because the group with the larger shock, the group that was told they were going to get a larger, larger shock, was feeling more anxiety and arousal because of the anticipation of the shock that was coming. And this is what led them to want to communicate with each other even more. To talk about the results in terms of the numbers, in the high anxiety group, 63% of the women wanted to interact with the other woman within their group to kind of talk about the experience, you know, share and affiliate, while only 37% wanted to remain alone and not converse with other people. Now, 37% is, you know, a decent chunk of people who weren't interested in affiliating, but it becomes even more interesting when you look at the low anxiety group. And in the low anxiety group, only 33% of the women wanted to affiliate with other women in the group. And that is 
you know, about half or a little over half of the high anxiety group. So there was a very large difference in the need for affiliation when you look at the high anxiety group versus the low anxiety group. And this high ar arousal caused by the anticipation of the shock was causing the people in the high anxiety group to seek out this affiliation with the other girls. This idea was proven even further when they did a second half to the study or a second part of the study where they instead had one group that included both types of participants. So essentially they had a group of people in one room that were going to be told that they were going to receive a shock, but also in the same room was a group of people that were told that they were not going to receive a shock and instead these people were there for a different reason. When the experimenters left this time, the people who were in the group of high anxiety who were told they were going to be shocked only wanted to affiliate with the people who were also in the high anxiety group, meaning that they weren't as interested in interacting with everyone else in the room who was just there not to receive a shock. And what's really interesting about this is it shows that there's kind of a deeper desire to affiliate with people who are going to be able to maybe empathize with the experience that you're having in this moment or understand where you're coming from. And that's what is going to allow you to have more clarity. The quote that was taken from this specific study and this researcher was, misery doesn't just love any kind of company, it loves only miserable company. The actual reasoning for that quote might not be as dark as you might initially interpret it to be, because the reasons why people seek out affiliation with people who are experiencing similar things is because they're usually looking to have some sort of social comparison. Essentially, the idea is that if they're feeling anxious, stressed, or worried in a situation surrounded by people who are also experiencing similar things, the idea is to compare themselves to say, is what I'm feeling normal? Like, should I be this worried or anxious or concerned about this shock that I'm about to receive or anything that's about to happen to me? The uh, two kind of categories that were used here in my social psychology textbook to describe this were going to be cognitive clarity, as in trying to fully understand what is going on in the situation by interacting with other people, but also emotional clarity, and that you're seeking to understand if your emotions are, you know, appropriate for the situation, or if you understand how you're actually feeling in comparison to others around you who are going to be experiencing the same thing. In social psychology terms, the one exception to this, not study, but to the concept that the study is researching is people who are exceptionally introverted, like top five percentile of introversion, like almost schizoid level of introversion, and people who have avoidant or dismissive attachment styles, essentially people who have a negative view of others when it comes to their needs in life or what they feel like they need from others in life. These two groups of people are the least likely to have a need or desire to affiliate with others in times of stress, and they might even actually actively reject affiliation from other people because they don't process emotions in that way as naturally or as easily as some other people. What's interesting, though, is that despite people who uh, report they much prefer social introversion or not relying on other people, they tend to have higher scores in terms of confidence and these sorts of things if they are within some sort of healthy social setting, even if they don't feel like they need it. So it's really interesting because you can see these people who don't have a need or desire for affiliation with other people, but if you put them into a setting where they're going to kind of naturally be interacting with others or affiliating with people, but not through the sense of needing other people, they tend to perform better in terms of their life as well. So next time you're feeling anxious, worried, or stressed, don't feel bad if you have the urge or need to go and talk to somebody about it because... It's a completely normal human desire and need to do so, to gain that cognitive and emotional clarity towards the situation and the anxiety that you're feeling. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I would like to remind everybody that I do offer coaching as well as personality assessments at my website, asurasec.com, if you're interested in working with me to find out what your personality type is and what that means for you. This has been Asura from Asura Psych. Have a good one.